you will not believe what has just happened recently. The notorious G5 Sahel Force, which was used as a French tool to control five Sahel countries, has now been made totally worthless by Niger and Burkina Faso. From the very start of this security force, it had been used to deploy troops in the Sahel region and exploit resources. However, Mali broke this trap and got out of it, leaving four members. It was still functional, but the recent blow has literally paralyzed France in the region. Niger and Burkina Faso's Ibrahim Traore recently conveyed their master plans to leave the G5 Sahel force, which will leave only two members in the alliance. Yet, why has this happened specifically now? Well, there is a lot that you don't know, and it's quite surprising what is going to happen next. Let's know everything in this video. The G5 Sahel Force, or G5S, was established in 2017 as a proactive response to the increasing challenges of terrorism, organized crime, and instability affecting the Sahel region. However, at that time, the African countries did not know that this alliance was actually being controlled by France. Originating from the joint determination of Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, and Niger, it embodied a shared commitment to address these issues through a unified military strategy. Yet France held the reins of the alliance. You should know that the Sahel has long grappled with instability characterized by weak governance, poverty, and a lack of economic opportunities creating a breeding ground for extremism. Exploiting these vulnerabilities, groups affiliated with Al-Qaeda and ISIS established strongholds, fostering violence and hindering development. This critical situation demanded a collective response, a collaborative effort transcending national borders and fostering regional self-sufficiency. Recognizing the interconnected nature of their challenges, the G5 countries collaborated to form the G5S. This joint initiative aimed to be more than just a military force. It was envisioned as a symbol of regional cooperation, providing hope to a region yearning for peace and stability. Yet, the alliance had loopholes that made it a tool to be hired and used by France to topple governments loyal to African people. However, the Sahel countries tried to use this paralyzed security alliance. By pooling their strengths, the G5S sought not only to counter terrorism and organized crime, but also to promote regional development and enhance the member state's influence on the international stage. Despite its noble aspirations, the journey of the G5S faced obstacles. Persistent funding shortages hindered the force's ability to acquire necessary equipment and sustain operations. Vast distances and porous borders in the region made communication and coordination challenging, introducing another layer of complexity. When it became clear that the G5 Sahel force was all for French interests, a different kind of narrative was created. We saw Africans igniting a fire of resistance against it instead of singing the praises of the G5 Sahel force and its partnership with the European Union. For too long, the G5S has served as a Trojan horse, a facade of regional security, masking the insidious realities of foreign dominance. While France and its allies parade themselves as benevolent protectors, their true intentions are as clear as the desert sun. To secure their own borders and siphon the rich resources of African land for their own gain. They offer meager financial aid like peanuts compared to the wealth they plunder from African soil. They trained African soldiers not to defend our homes and families, but to fight their own battles that have little to do with the well-being of our people. However, Africans learned that they were being used as pawns in their game. A unanimous message was given that Africans will no longer stand idly during so-called counter-terrorism operations conducted with little regard for the African lives they claim. It became clear that the G5S, far from being a solution, was a potent symbol of Africa's continued dependence. Breaking free from this reliance, shedding the shackles of neo-colonialism, and building Africa's own security forces was the key. Forces trained by Africans, funded by Africans, and dedicated solely to protecting African lives and interests were essential. The concept of forging true regional cooperation, not a collaboration orchestrated by external forces, was presented. It also became clear that the European Union, with its empty promises and self-serving agendas, offered nothing but a mirage of progress. They prescribed superficial solutions that failed to address the root causes of Africa's struggles, 
poverty, inequality, and lack of opportunity that breed despair and instability. At that time, the European Union was deeply supporting the G5 Sahel Force, which was quite a doubtful thing. It's because if the G5 Sahel Force were to benefit Africa, it would ultimately mean Europe had to compromise on the resources it was plundering in Africa, and everybody knew that Europe would never allow such a thing to happen. Therefore, it was revealed that the G5 Sahel Force was actually a tool by Europe to keep the forces in the Sahel region in check. Since Europe was training African troops, it ensured that African troops remained loyal to Europe, not Africa. Europe's method of training, African countries' troops, carries neo-colonial undertones. This is proved by seeing the historical legacy of European colonial powers, which exploited and influenced African nations, leaving a lasting impact on perceptions. What's more, the economic interests, such as access to resources, markets, or geopolitical advantages, contribute to the perception of a neo-colonial agenda in European engagement with African military training. Furthermore, there is an argument that providing military training enables Europe to maintain influence over the security architecture of African nations, influencing decisions related to conflicts, peacekeeping missions, and security responses. Military training programs are also seen as a tool for European countries to establish strategic alliances and enhance their position in Africa, indirectly shaping the security policies of African nations. Critics express concerns about conditionality and dependency, suggesting that military assistance may come with conditions, giving European nations influence over the political and military decisions of their African partners. Global power dynamics, where former colonial powers wield significant influence in international institutions, contribute to the perception that military training serves as a means for Europe to assert its interests in African affairs. Additionally, unequal power dynamics in military partnerships, with European nations possessing advanced military capabilities, create a perception of dependency and subservience on the part of African countries. That's when it has to get clear that no European country or the EU engages in any collaboration with Africa without expecting something in return. Europe's priorities often differ from Africa's. While some common goals may exist, Europe's focus on securing resources, markets, and strategic influence can lead to partnerships prioritizing their needs over Africa's, shaping Africa's development trajectory according to their agenda. Historical legacies of resource extraction and economic dependence persistently affect Africa's relationship with Europe. These historical imbalances create a dynamic where Europe holds an inherent advantage, often resulting in agreements that favor their interests. Therefore, in May 2022, Mali withdrew from the G5 Sahel Force, an entity purportedly for the greater good, but had in reality become a tool for French control and exploitation. Mali has long endured the burden of a French-led force disguising itself as a protector. Since 2012, its people have suffered the consequences of armed rebellion, their lives disrupted by the very forces claiming to safeguard them. Yes, the G5 Sahel forces were helping to initiate rebellions, toppling anti-West and anti-France governments. This G5 Sahel facade, built on the sacrifices of African soldiers and driven by French interests, failed to fulfill its promises. Instead of bringing peace and stability, it evolved into a symbol of foreign domination, depleting African resources and undermining our sovereignty. The lack of progress in combating armed groups clearly condemned this failed experiment, exposing the hollowness of promises and the cruelty of self-serving agendas. The military government's decision to withdraw from this alliance was a courageous act of defiance, rejecting neo-colonialism and taking a stride toward reclaiming its rightful place as an independent nation. However, only one of the five founding members of the group did not make much difference. Even though it was a huge blow to the idea of the creation of joint alliances, it showed that the alliances built after West's cooperation were actually superficial. They only served the interests of the West while appearing to help Africa. After Mali made this decision in 2022, it was sanctioned in various ways, with the excuse that a military junta was ruling the country. The isolation and sanctions imposed by the so-called international community were attempts to coerce Mali back into submission. However, the international community remained ignorant to the reality of French manipulation 
and indifferent to the cries of a people yearning for self-determination. But recently, the G5 Sahel force got a huge blow. On Saturday, military leaders from Burkina Faso and Niger declared their intent to withdraw from the G5 anti-jihadi force in the Sahel region of Africa, dealing a significant blow to the ongoing struggle against insurgents in one of the world's most troubled areas. Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. You should know that until now, the G5 has shown limited results. In 2017, the leaders of these five nations agreed to deploy a joint anti-terror task force supported by France. However, the military rulers of Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali have accused Paris of exerting undue influence, given the years of French deployments on their territories. Burkina Faso and Niger jointly announced their decision to quit all instances of the G5 Sahel, including the joint force. Effective November 29th, citing the organization's failure to meet its objectives. They expressed frustration with bureaucratic hurdles and asserted that the G5 Sahel's current form does not align with their pursuit of independence and dignity. Implicitly referring to France, they underscored that the G5 Sahel should not serve foreign interests at the expense of their people's welfare and sovereignty. Since 2015, more than 17,000 people have lost their lives in attacks in Burkina Faso and 2 million have been displaced by the violence. Yet the G5 Sahel force could do nothing. It was permanently present in all these Sahel countries, but terrorism and rebellions grew unrestricted. As of now, France has initiated the withdrawal of its 2,500 troops from Niger following demands by military rulers who ousted President Mohamed Bazoum in July. In response to the actions of the military regimes, the U.S. Ambassador, Kathleen Fitzgibbon, who arrived in August, is expected to present her letter of assignment soon, despite Washington's prior indication that it would not recognize Niger's new authorities. The three nations, Burkina Faso, Niger and Mali, have voiced support for the creation of an alliance of Sahel states, fostering closer economic ties and mutual defense assistance, as they resist international pressure for a swift return to civilian rule. Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger have entered into a mutual defense pact known as the Alliance of Sahel States, aiming to support each other against potential armed rebellion or external aggression. The agreement commits the countries to assist, including military support, in the event of an attack on any of the signatories. It considers an attack on the sovereignty of one party to be aggression against the others and obligates the nations to work together to prevent or address armed rebellions. Mali's military leader, Asimi Goita, announced the signing of the Liptako Gorma Charter on social media, establishing the alliance of Sahel states with a focus on collective defense and mutual assistance. The Liptako Gorma region, where the borders of Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger converge, has experienced armed rebellion in recent years. According to Mali's defense minister, Abdoulaye Diop, the alliance will involve a combination of military and economic efforts among the three countries, with a primary focus on combating terrorism. The three nations were previously part of the France-supported G5 Sahel Alliance Joint Force, launched in 2017 to address armed groups associated with Al-Qaeda and ISIS. However, they have undergone coups since 2020, leading to strained relations with France. France withdrew its troops from Mali and Burkina Faso, and tensions persisted with the military in Niger. The ECOWAS regional bloc has considered military intervention in Niger over the coup, but the situation remains complex, and France's relations with the affected states have soured. Mali has also requested the UN peacekeeping mission Menus May to leave the country, while Niger's military rulers have called for the withdrawal of French troops and the ambassador. Additionally, Mali has witnessed renewed hostilities by predominantly Tuareg armed groups, posing a threat to a 2015 peace agreement. Since Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger left the G5 Sahel force and established the Sahel Security Pact, it becomes clear that this new alliance is the real form of military alliance Africa needs. Now, instead of being a doormat military force that would allow terrorism to flourish and European companies to exploit, this security pact will allow the three nations to safeguard their territorial integrity. If any of the countries ever invaded any of the three countries in the pact, 
it would be an act of war, and Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso's forces would jointly fight against that country. This is quite different from what was done in the past. There was no time when African countries united in such a way to forge a military alliance that scared other countries whenever they thought about invasion. But there is more to the story, since three of the five founding members of the G5 Sahel Force have quit the alliance. There is no hope left for France to maintain the monopoly it once had. Another blow came when Chad and Mauritania, the remaining two members, announced their intention to dissolve the anti-jihadist alliance following the departure of the other three founding countries. Chad and Mauritania expressed respect for Burkina Faso and Niger's sovereign decision to leave the alliance, in line with the G5 founding convention's Article 20. This article allows the dissolution of the alliance at the request of at least three member states. The breakdown of the G5 Sahel has significantly shifted power dynamics in the Sahel region, leaving France's influence in a precarious state. The force's dissolution marks a substantial vanishing of the influence France meticulously built over decades. This unraveling exposes vulnerabilities, creates opportunities for new actors, and allows African nations to assert themselves. But a direct consequence is the diminishing leverage once held by France. The G5 Sahel served as a reign, granting France a level of control over joint operations and training programs. This influence, though subtle, often translated into shaping political outcomes and safeguarding French interests. With the force disbanded, France lost this direct channel, weakening its ability to subtly manipulate the political landscape in the region. Additionally, the perceived closeness of the G5 Sahel to France, coupled with its underwhelming performance against terrorism, led to a decline in public trust. This erosion of legitimacy further undermines France's position making it challenging to exert influence through traditional means. It has become certain that what France is losing in Africa now are things it can never have back, no matter what it does. The Sahel, once a fertile ground for French ambitions, is now marked by skepticism and, in some quarters, resentment. But France's challenges extend beyond reputational damage. The dissolution of the G5 Sahel aligns with a growing trend of diversification in the region's security partnerships. African nations increasingly seek support beyond France, turning to Russia, China, and regional players like Morocco. This diversification weakens France's monopoly on security cooperation, compelling it to compete for influence in a crowded and unpredictable field. The most significant consequence of the G5 Sahel's demise lies in its potential to reshape resource extraction dynamics. While access to the region's abundant mineral wealth remains a key French interest, the absence of the G5 Sahel makes it significantly harder to secure these resources through military means. Encouraged by the force's dissolution, African governments are likely to be more assertive in negotiating resource deals, potentially chipping away at France's historically dominant position in this lucrative arena. This quite proves that Captain Ibrahim Traore of Burkina Faso, along with other military leaders in the region, is trying to make Africa great again they are strategically kicking out France from every corner of Africa, ensuring that no patch is left where France and Europe can use their influence. Earlier, the presidents in these countries were made after French approval, but now, France has not even a fraction of the influence left. Its main tool, which was the trained troops in the five countries, was taken, and France was deprived of all its powers in Africa. What do you think? Will the remaining two countries also quit the G5 Sahel force? Or is it true that with the exit of three out of the five most powerful members of the alliance, France has been tied already? Let us know your thoughts on how the security pact between Niger, Burkina Faso, and Mali can take its place. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.